the ferrule doesn't twist on easily, you could just place the, the butt of the shaft on the floor and use a rubber mallet to tap the ferrule so the shaft penetrates through the large end of the ferrule. Now in some cases the ferrule may, may have to be struck fairly hard with the rubber mallet, but be sure to check the ferrule's alignment um, on the shaft after each blow. If the ferrule isn't straight with respect to the shaft, the ferrule will be damaged and need to be replaced. And be extra careful with any ferrule with trim rings because those can break off uh, very easily. To force the ferrule up, you can use the head to push the ferrule, um, ferrule up. Or you can do this the easy way with a uh, ferrule installation tool. These are either available from component suppliers or homemade using a small block of hardwood with a 3 8 inch drilled or 3 8 inch hole drilled through it. I'll show you later how you can make your own ferrule installation block at the end of this webinar. To use this tool, the ferrule uh, does not necessarily have to be on the shaft with any of the shaft protruding from the large end. With the ferrule just started onto the shaft, you can position the larger end of the ferrule over the hole or the appropriate size hole if your tool has more than one. Then you simply just push down on the shaft so that it goes through the, uh, the hole, often with very little force. The ferrule installation tool will not position the ferrule precisely at its final point, but it does make the initial installation very easily. They're very easy. You still need to take the club head and slide the shaft into it. Then you tap it on the floor to drive the ferrule into its final uh, location, or when the shaft bottoms out in the bore of the club. To do this, grab the head with one hand, and then hold the shaft about a foot down from the top of the hosel. And then holding the shaft tightly uh, uh, on the head, drive the butt end of the shaft against the floor or a metal plate. And then you continue this process until you can feel the shaft bottom out in the hosel. Oftentimes you'll hear a difference in the, the sound it makes, uh, which is a clue that you've hit the bottom of the bore. However, if you're swing weighting the club with tip pins, there'll, um, these will need to be installed first between, or before you drive the ferrule into its final position. The lips of these pins are approximately an eighth of an inch or, or uh, thick or, or even thicker, and failure to remember uh, to do this will create a gap. And be careful with any ferrule setting tools that are designed to put the ferrule into the exact location, because in my honest opinion, it's not necessary. With all the careful pre-calculations and calibrations of the ferrule setting tools, they can go to waste if you discover that the head's cl uh, club's bore depth was not measured accurately or the bore depth on the 7 iron was slightly shorter than the 8 iron, uh, thus leaving an unsightly gap between the ferrule and the hosel. A homemade ferrule tool uh, that can set the ferrule on 3 quarters of an inch up the shaft tip uh, is all it's necessary. The head can do the rest. What happens if you drive the ferrule up too far? Well, see. Well, after you install the ferrule, you want to carefully inspect that there's no gaps between the base of the ferrule and the top of the head. Uh, sometimes with woods and hybrids, you could drive the ferrule too far because the shaft tip compresses that little plastic stop in the bottom of the hosel. Um, and this, this might create a little tiny gap. And then for these little gaps, what you can do is just simply grind the shaft tip using your belt sander so that the ferrule comes to rest uh, against the hosel. And uh, you want to just make sure that you don't take too much material, otherwise that the, the club will become shorter, or the, more importantly, it will reduce the effective surface area for the epoxy, or the portion that goes into the hosel. But there's two other options you can use. In one case, you'll have to remove the current ferrule and install a new one, or you may be able to pull the current one down in place. And to do this, you can use uh, the vinyl shaft clamp, you know, the, the clamp that you use for uh, uh, gripping. Um, you just put, uh, 
put it in a vise, and then pull on the butt end of the shaft, and hopefully um, you can pull it into the proper position. Probably a better tool is an aluminum shaft clamp. And this can be positioned above the ferrule and lightly tapped with a rubber mallet in hopes of lowering the ferrule. That's not a real good picture there, but ho hopefully you get the, uh, the idea. But you need to use caution when using this method because you want to be careful. You don't want to mar the shaft, especially when working with graphite. So what I do is usually uh, place a piece of tape um, on the shaft just ab above the ferrule, uh, as this will help. And secondly, um, you want to be careful not to flare out the very top of the ferrule, as the aluminum shaft clamp is harder than the plastic. And when uh, you install a, uh, a reducer or a specialty ferrule, the trick is to install it and the shaft at the same time rather than in steps. Uh, the reason being you will inevitably get some epoxy down inside uh, where it shouldn't be and inhibit the shaft from going in all the way into the ferrule. Okay. Let me show you now how to make uh, your own inexpensive homemade ferrule installation block. And uh, believe me, this doesn't have to be fancy. The, the key is actually just providing a, a hole to push the shaft through so that the ferrule moves up the shaft a total of three quarters of an inch. This way it prevents the ferrule from going too far up the shaft for any assembly situation out there. Then you can simply use the head to drive the ferrule to its final destination. There are several ways to do this. The, uh, the simplest is taking a scrap piece of 1x4, which is only, one, uh, only 3 quarters of an inch thick. If you drill a 3 8 hole in the center, this will allow the shaft to penetrate to your workbench or floor and drive the ferrule up 3 quarters of an inch every time. Hardwood, hardwood is best because over time you might get a slight recess from the ferrule. You can get fancy and drill different size holes for the different tip diameters, but it's not necessary. The 3 8 inch hole will accommodate 335 and 350 wood shafts, plus 355 taper tip, and all 370 iron shafts. Initially, the 3 8 inch hole might be tight on some of the 370 shafts due to tolerances. But after it's been used a few times, uh, this size will just be just fine. I like to use something a little deeper uh, so I can have a recess for the ferrule to go into. And I find a small scrap of 2x4 that's at least uh, uh, one and a half inches wide will work just fine for this application. What you want to do is take a 9 16 spade bit and drill down three quarters of an inch in your in your block of uh, two by four. And then following the pilot hole from the spade bit, you want to drill the rest of the way down uh, using your three eighths inch bit. The two by four you see is only one and a half inches thick. This allows the shaft to penetrate uh, to your workbench or to the floor and drive the ferrule up three quarters of an inch every time so you can drive the ferrule on with the head. This way you can almost drop the ferrule uh, with the wider side down inside 